Buonasera a tutti, mi chiamo Alec Ross, è un grande onore essere con tutti voi. Eh, sono l'autore del, del libro Il nostro futuro, è anche un libro che esce in, sette, in settembre, ai eh, furiosi anni 20. Eh, senti, devo dire all'inizio, mi dispiace di non parlare in italiano, abito qui a Bologna, ho un'anima italiana, è eh, il mio secondo paese, ma ancora spaio troppo quando parlo in, Italio, in italiano, manco l'uso giusto del congiuntivo e quindi quando, adesso quando faccio questi discorsi li devo fare in inglese, quindi mi dispiace. Um, ma grazie per questa opportunità. And, and listen everybody, um, solo gli ottimisti cambiano il mondo, only optimists change the world. Uh, and I know it's very difficult to be optimistic in these days. But what I wanted to do uh, with the next 20 or so minutes is give a perspective on why I think we can and should be optimistic if we have the courage to make certain choices in this year, in 2021. In my opinion, 2021 will be the most important year in Italy's history since 1945. After World War II, Italy was beaten and bloodied. Hundreds of thousands of Italian citizens and, and soldiers lost their lives. Many of Italy's cities lay in rubble and its people in poverty. Italy was staring into the abyss, into the buio. Uh, but staring into the abyss of an Italy wrecked by World War II, Italy's character asserted itself. Italians are disciplined and strong in times of crisis. And it was out of crisis and the destruction of World War II that a new generation of Italian leaders em emerged and built the economy of industrial Italy. It was a lot of these entrepreneurs and the thousands of businesses, small and large, that were built immediately after World War II, this golden age of entrepreneurship that contributed a lot to the prosperity uh, that Italy continues to enjoy today. Today, Italy faces a, a similar moment of crisis. Uh, the economist Schumpeter and the artist Pablo Picasso both said the same thing. They said, ogni atto di creazione inizia con un atto di distruzione. There are now more than 100,000 souls that have been laid to rest by COVID. Econ Italy's economy has been more damaged by COVID than just about any other country on planet Earth. And in the same way that, in in the same way that World War II revealed the weakness of Italy's economy, be being rooted in these very small farms, and it hadn't yet modernized and industrialized like larger and more powerful European nations. I think part of what the pandemic has revealed to us now, which I think most of us already knew, is that the last 20 years have not been Italy's best years in terms of modernization, uh, in terms of digitization, in terms of really moving from a 20th century economy into a 21st century economy. And COVID has accelerated a number of trends. I described at length in my book, Il Nostro Futuro, and brought them to the present in Italy in a forceful way. And now is a time when Italy can respond with the same kind of discipline, focus, and entrepreneurship it demonstrated after World War II. Italians are strong in, in crisis and the crisis of the present moment calls for strong actions to be taken so that the 2020s finish better than they started. And there are about four things, four things that I wanna to describe to you, trends that I've described in my writing, 
which have been accelerated by COVID, uh, which I think we ne really need to wrap our arms around now and take action in 2021. Number one, digitization, like digitalizzazione. When my book was written, not that long ago, just a couple of years ago, there were 17.5 billion networked devices in the world. These are the, these are our smartphones. They are our internet connected laptops, like I'm speaking to you through now. They're the sensors in our supply chain, 17.5 billion. Today, just a few years later, that number is doubled. So in 2021, we are now in a world of 35 billion network devices. By 2025, not that long from now, 2025 is just around the corner, that number will have gone from 35 and more than doubled to 75 billion. And it's not because we're putting more mobile phones in more pockets, no. It's because we are animating new sectors of the economy with the zeros and ones of computer code that we traditionally don't think of as digital. Agriculture, fashion, shipping, manufacturing. These are all now digital industries. And coming out of this crisis of COVID, Italy needs to massively accelerate uh, its digitization. And I think that um, one of the way, ways in which it needs to do it too is by focusing on government and the bureaucracy. Um, the bureaucracy in, in Italy is absolutely destroying wealth. Closely related to Italy's slow, 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 uh, slowness to digitize is its slowness to finally do away with its jobs and wealth destroying bureaucratic rules that make it much too difficult to be an entrepreneur in Italy. In addition to writing and teaching, I'm a partner in a venture capital fund with more than 1 billion euros of assets under management. We've invested all over the world, including Spain, the United Kingdom, India, Australia, and Africa. But we've not invested in Italy, not because the talent is not here, but because the bureaucratic rules make venture capital investing from outside of Italy very unattractive. In the same way that entrepreneurs were unleashed to create new businesses after World War II, so too does the government now have a responsibility to digitize its processes and reduce its bureaucracy to make it easier for the next generation of Italian entrepreneurs to start their companies in Italy. Italy should also rewrite its laws to allow startups uh, to form much more easily than is historically the case. The next trend I want to point to are stronger ties between business and academia. In the United States and, and the UK, many of the best companies are born on its university campuses, from Stanford to MIT to Cambridge in the UK to Harvard to Johns Hopkins. And I've seen from my experience teaching at Bologna Business School at, of l'Università di Bologna that the same is possible in Italy, but we've got to tear down the walls between businesses and universities uh, so that there's closer collaboration between those two. The next trend that I wanna focus on is investment. Uh, around much of the world right now, the world is already aggressively engaging in investment for a world that is going to transition out of COVID. It's happening in Svizzera, it's happening in Inglaterra, it's happening in Germania, it's happening in China, it's happening in the United States. And I worry a, lot, a little, and I say this out of love, eh, parlo come uno della familia. Uh, I worry that Italians are a bit frozen right now, un po' congelato, uh, where we have not yet begun aggressively reinvesting in the economy. And, and I think it's a, absolutely critical for us to do so. And as we invest, it's like putting food in your body. And my strong belief is that the food that we put into our body uh, needs to be more protein than carbohydrates, more meat than dolce. You know, to be honest and to be transparent, to show a little bit of humility with you. When I was working for Barack Obama, uh, I was, you know, I was on the team that put together our own stimulus bill. 
And I honestly believe that one of the reasons when Italians ask me, how is it possible that Donald Trump won election after Barack Obama? How is that even possible? Part of it is because of some big mistakes we made where as we had these hundreds of millions of dollars in the same way in which Italy will have hundreds of millions of euros from the EU to invest, we did it. We invested too often preserving, trying to bring back the old system, trying to preserve an existing system. So we saved a system, but we didn't always save the people. And the system that we saved was already increasing inequality, inuguyayansa. And so what happened was the numbers looked good. GDP went up. Unemployment went down. Everybody told us we were geniuses. But what they didn't realize is that by restoring the existing system, what we did is wages just stagnated. They didn't grow. Inequality grew and anger grew. And it created the conditions that unleashed Donald Trump on the United States. Italy now has its moment. Italy now has the moment where it can decide uh, how to spend these hundreds of, of, of billions of euros. And it's got to avoid the political traps of trying to restore the old system, of trying to provide liquidity and solvency to businesses to keep them alive that maybe should die. We really need to think about how to grow new infrastructure and new muscles in the Italian economy. And so this will be the test. And whether in two or three or four years, we get uh, Italy's own version of Donald Trump emerging, or whether we will um, uh, not see the Italian Trump is really gonna be based on these investments. Uh, the next trend that I wanted to talk about, number three, Il fallimento. Um, in the same way in which after World War II, Italians took big risks as the cities lay in rubble, as people had enormous difficulties, there were a huge number of risk takers who started companies with almost nothing. And that then created the basis for the wealth in, in Italy's economy today. Unfortunately, one thing that is de developed culturally is la paura del fallimento. La paura del fallimento. Se si fallisce, è uno scandalo. Um, this is not a good attitude for entrepreneurship. You know, there's a reason why, you know, Italy has only had one unicorn, only one startup worth a billion dollars, where Estonia which has a population smaller than Milan, has had five. Why Sweden, which has, 10, which has like 15% of the population of Italy, has had more than 10. It's because we over-punish failure in Italy culturally and legally, and we make failure a scandal. So what that does is it makes it much more difficult for people to take risks. You know, I try to remind people, Steve Jobs created this, the iPhone. Uh, after he was fired from Apple, he was fired and he was brought back. Many of the great entrepreneurs in the United States and the, and the world failed. Barack Obama, my old boss, before he ran for Senate, he got destroyed running for Congress. He got destroyed running for Congress. He failed horribly. He got crushed, but he learned from his failure. And so what I do believe is the only way, the only way Italy is going to get a new wave of economic growth, a new wave of entrepreneurs, is if it sets aside this cultural attitude that over punishes failure. And then the next thing I want to speak to is a cultural issue as well. Uh, I think I'm young, although I think I look very old on the video. 
Um, ho 49 anni. Ho 49 anni. Sono un ragazzo. Dai, sono un ragazzo. Um, in Italy, when I'm at a table of very important people, I'm almost always the youngest. Uh, but if I'm in Silicon Valley or London or Berlin, in the same tables, I'm often one of the oldest. Uh, there, we take too long to invest in the next generation of Italians. Uh, my fund, which I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of money, over a billion euros in assets under management. We've invested in 22 companies, 22. And I, at 49 years old, am older than all of the amministratori delegate of these 22 companies. They're all younger than me. And a lot of them are in their 20s. Now, I'm not saying that that's always right. And I'm not saying that people in their 50s and 60s and 70s can't be effective executives. My problem is that unless you have one of the cognomi famosi um, and sort of inherited your company, if you're in your 20s, your 30s, or even your 40s in Italy, you aren't given the opportunity for investment uh, that societies with higher levels of growth have. So I do believe it's time for us in the same way after World War II in 1945, we turn to a new generation of Italians. I also believe that this year in, in 2021, it's a moment for us to transition to the next generation. And this brings me to my final point, uh, women. There is a wonderful opportunity for us right now. Remember I said, ogni atto di creazione inizia con un atto di distruzione. Well, in this moment of destruction of COVID, one of the acts of creation that I believe we can do that will do more for society, more for our government, governance and government, and more for our economy than anything else, is to create a new role new opportunities for women in our economy. The countries that were best managed during the pandemic uh, were usually run by women. When you think about New Zealand, when you think about some of the, some of the, Nor the, the European companies that did it best, I think we're at a moment where, because we've given so few opportunities to women, The ones who emerge have to be almost like superheroes. And I think we would all benefit if we intentionally advantage women in the economy, in our businesses, and bring more of them into governance. So the, you know, my summary thoughts in all of this is I think about my writing, you know, Il nostro futuro, and now the furious 2020s, which is, which is coming out in September. We're at an inflection point. We're at one of those very special moments in our history where we can imagine and invent the future as we want it. Technology and science are going to continue to develop very quickly. Um, it's going to move very fast. And we cannot just pretend uh, like we can keep things the same. You know, I think about a book by another Feltrinelli article, Lampedusa, whose character said, if we want things to remain absolutely the same, we have to change everything. The point here is that if you do not change, you will fall behind. And if we want to improve, it's a moment where we need to take dramatic changes for the better. This is our opportunity. Ogni atto di creazione inizia con un atto di distruzione. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you briefly today. È stato un grande onore. Eh, buona serata.